Hello my garden friends. This is Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com. It's been a little bit since I've made a video. Uh, I've had a rough week or so because I'm recovering from coronavirus. And thankfully the yard has been taking care of itself due to permaculture design principles. <laughs> um, this is a mostly perennial system, as you know, if you've seen my channel in the past, um, a food forest, if you will, uh, with fruit trees and berry bushes and vining crops and perennial vegetables and reseeding annuals and uh, some natives with flowers that bloom and aromatic herbs that feed and support pollinators and local wildlife. Uh, so this property supports me and my family and, um, and the local ecology as well. So now at the end of October, right before Halloween, tomorrow is Halloween 2021. And uh, I just wanted to show you what the yard looking like today. So we're starting to see some fall color and the pawpaws are beginning to drop their leaves. Those are the three pawpaw trees over there. Um, and we'll just take a quick walk through the yard. Uh, this is the bed that's closest to the house. The asters are blooming, but you can see, even though I did give them a pretty significant haircut trim, right around Memorial Day, I should have continued to trim off the growing tips probably through August because now they are bloom heavily blooming. Uh, the bees are still very active around the asters. They are an important source of um, pollen and nectar for the pollinators, uh, but they are a little heavier and leggier than I'd like for them to be and so they've sagged and created that open center that I would kind of like to avoid in the beds that are closest to the house. So uh, that makes me think that I need to take note next year and make sure that I trim them more consistently throughout the growing season to keep them bushier and nice and tight when they bloom in the fall. Um, this is what the rain garden looks like right now. And I can see that I have some maintenance to do when all of these leaves have dropped in that uh, the red aronia berry, which is right there, has decided to send up a lot of suckers this year. And I think it's because I pruned it back very hard last year, so or or in the spring. So um, there, it, it really devoted a lot of energy to get growth up out of those roots. So here you can see a sucker coming up there in the middle of the Baptisia. There's another sucker and um, and just next to it, there are, are some more suckers that are coming up. So I'm definitely going to go in and trim those back. I really am considering getting rid of the red aronia berry. I think it's kind of superfluous in this bed. And um, I did want, I liked it for the graduated height. So I may just prune it hard again and try to keep up with the suckers next year because I liked that it was kind of a mid-height thing and I'm letting that pear tree that's next to it get to be the tallest thing in the bed. Uh, this is the American Beauty Berry and the berries are still hanging on tight. They haven't been bleached yet by the weather so they are still that vibrant fuchsia purple color and I think they look really cool this time of year. Um, the Maxima rubecchia, which is the great coneflower here. Um, they, I, I definitely need to come through and just trim off those stalks. The plant looks really healthy down at the bottom and that may never die completely back over the winter. Uh, 
there's always usually a little bit of green at the base of this plant uh, but those stalks have definitely given up and most of the seeds are gone the birds are really enjoying the seeds uh, but those stalks are kind of icky looking right up by the house um, most of my perennials I tend to leave the seeds hanging on leave the leaves uh, leave the stalks for the birds and wildlife over the winter but things that are close to the path and close to the house I'd like to clean up a little bit uh, because I am still in a residential uh, suburban neighborhood uh, and it's kind of nice to have a more uh, manicured look right around the house and pathways um, so these seed heads are really cool looking here these are from the balloon flowers which are um, a native and I can actually see the seeds inside those heads uh, so they spread uh, throughout the bed as well by those seed heads and they're just kind of cool so I like to leave those um, this is what things are looking like down toward the meadow strip. I actually planted a few sweet potatoes in here and I am loving that this year because the vines spread around and they're very much like a ground cover. Uh, and then I can either harvest those potatoes as soon as the vines die back completely. It is starting to get kind of cold at night, so you can see some cold damage on the vines, but they're not dead yet. So um, you can harvest the potatoes at that point, or because my soil is so sandy uh, and because I am in zone 7A, in New Jersey um, I can just leave those sweet potatoes in place and allow them to rot over the winter because they are not perennial in this zone they won't make it but they will improve the soil around it and around it we have lilies here and there's a white lilac that I just put here um, during the summer and there's some bee balm right there as well as some anise hyssop that I just put in a, a few weeks ago right before we got sick <laughs> and there's a honeyberry there that actually got pretty sunburned and dropped its leaves a few weeks ago so I'm hoping that it's recovering. I do see a bit of green trying to come back in some places on that plant and uh, I hope it does okay this spring. If it struggles next season, I may move it. Uh, this is just a very sunny spot in the yard and it just may be too much sun for the honeyberry. Um, this is the cherry tree it's a sweet cherry it's just a few years old it hasn't fruited yet hasn't even flowered yet i think next spring will be its third year so i'm hoping for some flowers it is getting a pretty substantial trunk at this point so i think we might be in good shape um there are a few perennials uh in here per perennial um native plants and back there is the new jersey tea that's about to lose its leaves. That's um, a perennial deciduous shrub that has leaves that can be made into tea. And um, they are supposed to be really well loved by rabbits and deer, but the wildlife haven't found it yet. They don't bother with it really. It does bloom in early spring with poofy white flowers so there that's really cool uh, and it is a nitrogen fixing shrub so it does uh, improve the soil around it and then this is another little honeyberry and that's doing okay I, I think that it's just getting cool so it's gonna drop its leaves soon uh, there's also there's another New Jersey tea but there's also some self-seeded fennel right next to it so that kind of is really liking that spot and they're gonna battle it out <laughs> um, I have fennel everywhere else in the yard so I probably won't leave the fennel there to overtake the NJT I'm just leaving it there for now but I won't let it take over because NJT is a little bit more rare even though that is a native um, it's not easy to germinate those seeds I went through a whole seed packet and I actually only got two plants to germinate out of it um, 
because those seeds tend to germinate really well in situations where there's fire. So it's recommended to actually boil those seeds for a few minutes before they germinate and then they have to be cold stratified. They're super tiny. They're just like dust almost. Uh, so they're just kind of a tricky seed and there's some luck involved. <laughs> um, this is the Russian quince. It's still hanging on to its leaves. Uh, I do intend to prune these two fruit trees in late winter. I have to be mindful of the power lines. Not Neither of these trees are supposed to get that tall, but um, they really are getting a little more leggy than I'd like them to be. If they're, if the quince produces fruit on those tall kind of water sprout kind of branches, then they will likely break because they're so leggy. So I'm going to have to trim those in late winter. That's when I'll do that pruning. And uh, there's the yucca. And this is kind of the overview of what the meadow strip looks like right now. Uh, once a lot of this dies back, I will probably um, trim down the tall stalks of the flowers. I don't know that I'll take a mower through here this time because there, there is quite a bit of uh, perennials that are looking pretty good and some of them may overwinter the way that they are without dying back completely. So I don't really want to disturb them too much with a mower, but I may take a weed whacker through here uh, just to kind of neaten things up over the winter. These are asters and they're finishing up with their blooms. There's still a few flowers left though, and the pollinators are taking advantage of them. And we'll give a quick look through the food forest. The leaves are dropping. The beech plums here, the peach right there, the Red Haven peach. The Montauk daisies are finishing up. And the Asian pear. I love it because the buds for next year are already swelling and they are getting ready for the next flush of growth that they're going to put out. They need to chill, relax. They've got a whole winter to rest, um, but the pears always have those swollen buds and it's so exciting. <laughs> um, the jujube put on a lot of growth this year and that is probably gonna get trimmed because it looks like it, it looks like that could fall over at any moment. It's not. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, and jujube fruit are not humongous. So I don't feel like that, that would be uh, in danger of breaking any branches. But I think I want to give it the chance to get a little thicker, a little more sturdy, and get a little more structure with the scaffolding of the branches. So I'll probably take a couple of feet off the top of that one. Uh, this jujube actually sent up quite a lot of suckers from down below the graft. So uh, I did let those, they flowered profusely. I let them fruit, but the, the fruit that came out below the graft were very small. They were like the size of a marble. And you could see some of them still hanging on there. Uh, I tasted it and it wasn't delicious. So um, I'm just going to trim those off and just keep after it and not really let them come up too much. I may let a branch or two happen from below the graft. I did root prune it, so I separated it from the rest of the tree. Um, but that and the, the tree that I want to save is grafted. The fruit are much larger. I have a Shanxi Lee and a Lang Jujube. And... Um, those, the only reason I want to keep a bit of what is coming from below the graft is for the blooms and the pollination and the diversity there. So uh, I just want the most fruit possible. And though I have two different jujubes fairly close to each other, that brings in a third bit of genetics and I'm okay with that. So it just 
allows for better pollination that way, as long as it's not taking too much energy from the main tree that I really want to, the fruit from. Um, over here is the apple bed and the last year as soon as the black aronia berries ripened the birds took them like the next day they the whole bush was cleaned of berries and i didn't get any last year but this year they kind of hung around and the birds are just not interested in them this year there are black aronia berries all over this bush and they've been there since August when they were well they've been ripe since August that's when they really turned ripe and the birds are just leaving them they're so weird <laughs> I don't know why that is um and then down here I'm really happy that uh, I I planted a bit of horseradish last fall and it was very small throughout most of this season but now it's starting to send up leaves it likes this weather um, so it's kind of developing that spot. I'm not harvesting this horseradish this year. I'm going to give it, uh, all winter to sleep. And I think next year it's going to be a much more substantial plant. Uh, the rose is still blooming and this is bronze fennel. And this plant was very happy here. I started this from seed in the spring and this plant was very happy here this year. I'm wondering if it's going to reseed as easily as my other fennel has. This fennel is really herbaceous. It doesn't really create a, um, a bulb at the bottom, a, a thick uh, kind of a stem like other fennel does. Uh, this is really just for to, to use as an herb for flavoring rather than as a vegetable um, in the kitchen. But the eastern swallowtail butterflies still love it. And I saw some on there this season. Uh, I have a volunteer pumpkin vine coming out of that bed because last year's Halloween pumpkins lived in there at the end of their lives. <laughs> um, and I'm just letting it go. I don't even know if any pumpkins will really develop from this. It's so late in the season. But I do see some, some female flowers and there's a female flower there uh, and it looks like one pumpkin might develop but we'll see what happens i'm just letting it grow because the pollinators like those big pumpkin flowers i know that pumpkin leaves are also edible and um, i can trim those off and saute them and eat them like a vegetable uh, there's the elderberry that's still hanging on to some leaves and the uh, blueberry leaves are turning red. There's lots and lots of suckers coming up from the pawpaw tree. It definitely wants to form a pawpaw patch, but I'm not going to let that happen. I have three pawpaw trees. I don't need more in this yard. So I may pop them out and try and pot them up and share them with friends. I was successful doing that with two trees last year. Um, but I'm definitely not going to leave all these suckers to come up around these trees. They will just completely shade out all my blueberries, and I don't want that to happen. I did add another little blueberry cutting that had rooted uh, in a pot. I, I rooted that, so I added that to this patch. Um, I do have a current that I trimmed all the way to the ground, and it is coming back, so we'll see how that does next year if it struggles i'll just take it down again and that's basically what's happening in the garden while i've been sick <laughs> so it's not as beautifully manicured as i tend to try to keep it but it doesn't have to be and it's getting ready it's winding down for the season um the comfrey still looks fantastic it's so lush uh, I really do have the opportunity at this point in the season to chop that one last time and spread it around in the beds to use as mulch. Um, but I'm not working on any kind of fertilizing at this point. I'm just letting the garden, saying goodbye to the plants that kept me company this summer. <laughs> That's what's happening now. Thank you for joining me. And um, I will definitely 
make a new video very soon. There's gonna be a lot of activity in the greenhouse in the backyard this winter. Um, I have plans for things that are going on in there. So please keep joining me and stay tuned and subscribe to the channel and like the video and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Okay, see you soon everybody, bye-bye.